All right, welcome back to Hematite Homestead. Um, let's see how this thing did. All right, so I took a whole day's worth of video, or so I thought I was, of a test running this guy. And uh, turns out I was using a different mode that's only mode on my phone compatible with uh, my wireless mic, which is this. And I'm really happy with it because it picks up really well. But uh, it doesn't pick up that great in the camera mode. It has its own smart mic mode. Well, it turns out that it doesn't save the videos. It only uh, it only takes the videos. And you actually have to go into the video, click the save button, and I didn't know that. So I took a whole day's worth of footage, me test running this thing, and I got absolutely none of it. So now I'm back to my wireless mic. Uh, it's plugged in. I'm not crazy about it. It seems like it only works unless I'm like right here. But hopefully... I can uh, edit this to where you can hear. So let's talk about how the test run went. The test run went really well. I was uh, pretty pleased with it. I evaporated about two, uh, two gallons an hour once I got it up to temperature. And I know that because I'm measuring five gallon buckets. I put 15 gallons in it. I only ran it 15 gallons. I kind of want to try it at 20 gallons. It'll hold 25, but I'm not sure that uh, I'm going to be able to do that uh, before sap starts running. I uh, already went out and tapped some trees. We got a few more trees to tap. We'll do here in a few minutes. The weather looks like it's going to be great this week for a sap to run. And maybe we'll get some sap in this thing this weekend. I don't know how well you can see that. So I lined it with fire brick just on both sides. And what I was explaining the other day when I realized I wasn't taking video was that I couldn't get as much fire brick as I wanted. I just couldn't find it anywhere. It seemed like nobody had it. And... uh I got a very little bit. So I, I did the same thing that we were talking about doing with the uh, ash, I mean with the uh, sand, except I didn't get sand. Instead I put an ash bed in the bottom of this and the ash bed's about to right here. And then I got a little gap on both sides on top of the fire brick between the brick and the pan. And I piled ash on top of that and I put some ash on the back wall. In the road. I do have a few bricks on the back wall, but I, I didn't cut them or anything. I just laid them in there and I packed ash in where they didn't fit. And uh, so you can see it, I ran it all day the other day. It didn't burn the paint off of the barrel, except in a few spots. And uh, right here, it's starting to burn the paint off. This is where most of the heat was. And one problem I had was my fire was always like from here back. When I start cooking sap, I'm going to have to try to make sure I get plenty of fire from all the way. Also found that it ran better when I left the door open. And I would leave the door open about like this for most of the run, but I could open it up. And it drafted air a lot better than through here. And I even took the plug out of here. I don't think I'm going to add any air to it. It burned really well with just leaving the door open. And it retained the heat and it boiled really good. I was really happy with it. All right, last year we only tapped five trees and we got seven quarts of uh, syrup from those. Uh, this year I, I, I tapped 12 yesterday and I got five more to go today. They'll give 17 total. We're standing at by our biggest maple right here. Let me get back and give you a better look at it. And so you can see the size of that. Now, that, uh, believe it or not, that was my most... My biggest producer as far as gallons is concerned but this little tree right here is my most consistent i got five gallons every day from this so we got that tapped again and uh the big tree 
and I cannot find any of my lids so I went with this uh, I covered them in plastic with the bungee cord around them but I broke down yesterday and bought some lids and I'm gonna do one thing different. I punched holes in the top of the lids and put the, the tubing right in the top. Well, I think I'm gonna change that and uh, fill the sides of the bucket and put the tubing in the side. That way I can keep my lids intact for storage. Here I got my cart ready to go to go over here and tap some more trees. Here's what I was talking about. I just took a one inch spade bit. Or I think it was three quarter maybe. And it went through the side of the bucket pretty good. And I'll run the tubing in there and leave my lid intact. This is a tapping bit. You can see the flutes on it are a lot longer than a normal drill bit. And I got the tape on it marking how deep to go. And I drill the tree to about right here. Uh, I got a little hammer for putting the taps in. Got some tubing. Taps are down in there somewhere. So let's go over here and tap a tree. All right, this tree last year was uh, very inconsistent. One day I'd get a big pill out of it, and next day, not much at all. We're going to tap it again, give it another opportunity this year. And uh, my goal this year is to get two gallons of sap, and I want, um, hopefully, I can make some maple sugar this year. And the reason I want to make maple sugar is because later in the year we'll be harvesting some cooney coonies and we'll be doing some cured meats. And I thought how cool would it be to use sugar that we harvested out of trees right here off the homestead. So one gallon of syrup that we'll use in the house and pass around to some friends and family and then hopefully the other gallon to make some sugar. There's another one of my big producers right there. Haven't tapped it yet. Last year it was outside the fence. Uh, if you watch the Greener Pastures videos this year, we moved the fence around those trees to give the coonies some more tree line. And I think I'm going to try and run some tubing so that I can run it through the fence and on the outside of the fence because the coonies like to go down in between those and scratch on the post and lay in the leaves when the leaves are laying down in here. There you can see Oliver scratching on some trees. And now he's going to stop as soon as I say that. So we'll go over there and figure out how I want to do that one here in a few minutes. But right now this tree, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Alright, so big disclaimer, I'm not showing you how to tap maple trees. I'm showing you how I'm tapping maple trees. And, uh, watching YouTube videos last year. Last year was the first year we did this. And watching YouTube videos kind of helped me out through the process. So. Uh, you want to stay away from the taps we did last year. Last year I tapped it on this back side. This year I'm going to tap it over here. Uh, the drill goes in at a slight upward angle. Not much, just a very little bit. And I'm going to drill to my mark. This is the tap. We'll put that in the tree and uh, take the hammer and tap it in real lightly and uh, and then tubing. And I found yesterday as cold it was out here it's really hard to get the tubing up on the tap and I could just put it in my mouth blow a little bit of hot air on it and believe it or not that helped me get it up further on the tap. Still below freezing. We want around 20 at night, around 40 during the day for optimal running. And 
Looks like most of this week is going to be in that rain. And then just, it's going to be difficult. This uh, tubing is so cold. There we go. I like to put the tubing on first and then measure up how much I need. Of course, I had a bunch of these made up and I put them in trees yesterday, so now I have to make up some more. Put that in the hole we made and give it a good little tap. And then the bucket, I've already drilled the side on this bucket. Cut this guy and just go in the bucket. Looks like there's about what I need. There's what we got there. And I think I'll take a bungee cord and bungee this to the tree. Here's the tree in the boys' pasture, and that is uh, that was also one of my most reliable trees last year. I usually got about five gallons every day out of it. So I'm, uh, I almost ran out of tubing over there. I was trying to make them as short as possible. So I'm trying to run this through the fence here. So last one. Well, unfortunately, that is me. I didn't realize it was ice. I thought it was water. I stepped in it and uh, it would have been funny if I had the camera on. But uh, now the back of my phone looks like that too. So that kind of stinks. But, yeah, that hurt. I'm glad I didn't go all the way through the water or I'd have had a wet rear end.
All right, I got me some firewood loaded up over here. It's uh, not enough for the whole season, but we'll work on that some more later. It's plenty to get me started. And you saw me put the cover, so I want the canopy here so that I can cook out of the weather. And this canopy was broken. This thing here is bent. I have a new one, but I didn't want to use a new one because you can't really tell it, but this one has maple sugar on the inside of it from where we used it last year. And uh, yeah, this one's bent here too. So I didn't want to use my new one. I wanted to use this one in case uh, wind wrecks it again. It won't kill me that bad. But my biggest concern is I've, I'm firing up the stove because I don't know if I have enough space here. I extended this out and it's kind of leaning, but the damper still works and I'm not getting any smoke through here. So I'm okay with that. So I'm going to try and get up the temperature, add a little bit more water into it. I've got about 12 gallons in there now. And I want to try and get up the boiling temperature and make sure I'm not going to melt this cover here. Again, if I do, I won't like it, but I won't be totally heartbroken because I have a new one over here. I just didn't want to use it. So and you probably saw me put the ashes from a burn bucket that I was keeping me myself warm through the cold morning. I'm just going to try and get me a good fire in here and get up to uh, operating temperature. Uh, get this thing boiling and see how much radiant heat comes off the pipe and hopefully it won't melt my cover. So, so it looks like I'm doing another test run today. <laughs> Alright, I got her steaming. Right now we're at almost 150 and climbing. Got pretty good fire going in there. So it looks like I'm going to be okay here. This flue pipe is so hot I can't touch it. And I don't feel any heat on this at all. So I think we might be alright. This is just a couple hours into it though. So the, the big judge will be when uh, we're cooking sap for all night long. And the flue pipe is far enough away from my preheater that it's not really going to give me any preheat effectiveness anymore, I don't think. It's a little bit warm. But... And the bottom's a little bit warm from the steam, too. But I think we're going to be okay. I got it singing to me. That's what I want. I don't know if you can hear that or not. All right, so next time we see this thing, it'll be in full operation, getting the uh, sap put in it and cooking down the maple syrup and hopefully some maple sugar. So thanks a lot for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and see this thing play out. I've got all the trees tapped and uh, I'm gonna have sap this week. I'm pretty sure when I'm off work Thursday evening, I'm gonna be cooking sap. So thanks all for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you like my barrel stove evaporator. And we'll see you next time.